Hi guys, Big Snowball here, and today I'm going to do an unboxing of the Seagate 4 terabyte uh, external hard drive. Now, that's not a completely amazing proposition, the bulk storage drives these days, but what has been evident in the last few years, and especially now, is that buying OEM drives, buying OEM 3.5 inch drives, is significantly more expensive on average than buying these external drives. Now the reason behind that is is that quite frankly what is the market for a three and a half inch drive like this? The only the only thing that you can put these into is typically a desktop computer and really a lot of people are just getting by on laptops these days and there are desktop computers out there but they tend to actually use a lot of laptop parts or so something sort of started with the, the iMac and they started using two and a half inch uh, or 1.8 inch uh, laptop drives. So the number of things that you're able to put one of these things into has been dwindling over the years. So the, I, I don't know about production numbers, but basically the interest in large three and a half inch OEM drives is, is getting lower and lower each year, I think. Uh, so, oh, all that. Seattle drivers. Uh, so basically, I've found that, and a lot of people have found, obviously, it's, it's no secret, but these external drives typically end up being significantly cheaper, and that's because they're basically a product. Uh, the number of people who can use this is very low, but you can use this on just about anything. You can use it for transferring data around, you can use it for, uh, you know, backup, you can use it for your box storage, you can connect it to a NAS potentially, you know, I mean like a media center or something like that. So let's have a look at this thing. Typically they don't advertise any specifications, while if you're going for three and a half inch internal OEM drives, there's sort of like tons of specifications like green, red, black from Western Digital, 5900 RPM, all that kind of business. And quite frankly, if you're running a desktop, the necessity to have like a three and a half inch drive that is X specification is very low these days. I mean, if you're gonna be working with the data or it's gonna be on your operating system or something like that, just get an SSD. Just just stick to SSDs for, for any work or anything like that, where games are installed. Just get an SSD. Even if you do video, I don't really understand uh, doing anything other than just getting enough SSD to do video. It's I know it's a little bit pricey still, it seems like it's extra, but the sizes are getting considerable now. Um, you know, for $200 you can get yourself top of the line SSDs. So here we have the box. None of this is interesting to me. <laughs> uh, power adapter. So, one of the other uses of these drives is actually getting one of these out of it. Uh, so basically, these external drives are probably the most versatile thing you can have. So when Newegg had a deal on, on this setup, they, uh, I believe I got these two for $120, and next nearest four terabyte hard drive is like 155 So it's a huge discount on what is a very, you know, very much a commodity product. And inside these things is standard three and a half inch drives. There used to be some problems like, can you rip them out? It's also, also always worth double checking, but I've had experience with this uh, Seagate uh, external drive before the uh, quote unquote expansion, and they're perfectly fine. You can crack them open, although cracking these open is just a little bit trickier than your average uh, enclosure of some type. Uh, there are no screws. You're gonna have to do a little bit of prying and, and that sort of thing, and I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So the few tools I'm going to go into this now, I haven't done this before on this particular model. Um, a, a small prying tool. I don't really want to damage this too much, so maybe I won't use this. Uh, one of these flathead screwdrivers. Um, again, it's just going to be for prying. If there are any screws, it's really going to be at this sort of level. Uh, sort of standard standard size and then sort of like a jeweler size. So let's go at it. So a lot of these enclosures these days are toolless in terms of toolless from uh, the factory. So uh, it's probably no use looking under there, although I can feel a screw in there, I think. I think I do. No, it's just a little hole, just a plastic hole there. Let's go for the side now. Let's see if I can pry open the corner. Now the, the actual drive will be pretty deep inside here, so the risk of uh, 
damaging your the drive itself is very very low no matter how much force okay there we go so we can see I'm already popping uh, the the thing holding it together inside there somewhere use this thing to help me along the way just to keep that open so that I can go along and pop all the clips if it is in fact clips on all the sides there we go that sounds good sounds bad if I'm trying to put this back together I know there are ways you know maybe after I figured out how to do it the first time the second one I don't need to be so destructive there we go so there's more clips on the top it seems so let's just go through there it up like a key. There we go. There we go. And it's all off. So I've gone into that pretty hard, as in like I've been not really cared about how I've opened it. And I do believe that this is completely salvageable. So you can see how the uh, these holes line up with things on here. And if I wanted to, I could just go ahead and actually just slide that straight back on. I don't think there's any problem. So here we have a four terabyte drive. Uh, typically they're toolless inside here. I don't know the specifications of this. You could probably look it up, but uh, in all likeliness is going to be about a five, five, six, 5,600 RPM drive. I tend to prefer that anyway for bulk storage. I don't need my drive spinning real fast to, to keep my movies and spare, spare stuff on it. So let's see how to get this hard drive out. Now we are at the hard drive now, so I don't want to ruin anything. I think maybe, there we go, get it out of the plastic first. There we go. So it's just held in there with a little bit of rubber. So these rubber points just sort of like hold it in there, like squeezing it. Oh, we've got some nice screws on, on these. And that looks like how the hard drive is being kept in place. So nice, four really nice screws. I might actually keep them and uh, just slide it straight out. So, yeah, these screws were really in there. Oh my gosh. There we go. Uh, they got some hardcore robots screwing these things in. Or maybe uh, tie workers. Which part of Thailand do they make these? It's up in uh, Chiang Mai, isn't it? Up in the north. There's a facility, I think, in uh, Malaysia. Mostly Thailand in the north. That's why the floods in uh, 2000 and something just put a whole crimp on the entire industry. Alright, that's pretty hard. To, there we go. So as we can see there, there's just the SATA connectors there, so the hard drive just slides in and then connects up. Don't need that. And we have our drive ready to go. Normal SATA connectors, you can stick this straight into a PC and you've saved yourself a lot of money and you also still actually have the option of, you know, using using it as an external drive if you don't don't need to. It's always uh, a good idea to, you know, if you see a bargain on one of these external drives, just grab it. You can always use it as an external drive, which is pretty versatile. Or if you need an upgrade for your actual desktop, yeah, go ahead. All right, that wraps things up. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and uh, good luck with your hard drive case cracking. Cheers.